how our next guest, moving towards our second session of the afternoon, which will be treatment and cure. Our great friend Rita Cosby is a renowned TV host, radio host, best-selling author, and a veteran correspondent who anchored highly rated primetime shows on Fox News and MSNBC. She is currently a special correspondent for the CBS syndicated program, Inside Edition, specializing in interviewing newsmakers and political figures. Honors for the three-time Emmy winner include the Matrix Award, the Jack Anderson Award, and she was also selected by Cosmopolitan as the fun and fearless female. <laughs> A, re a recipient of the Ellis Island Medal of Honor and the Lech Wales Walesa Freedom Award. She hosts the National Memorial Day Parade broadcast to all U.S. military installations around the world. October 11, 2010 was declared Rita Cosby Day in the state of New York for her extraordinary journalism and exemplary service on behalf of her community our great friend, Rita Cosby. Thank you. Wow, thank you. That cosmopolitan always follows me. By the way, David, you need to be in broadcasting with that great voice, doesn't he? My gosh. I need you to fill in on the show today, would you? <laughs> Um, you have heard from some great speakers today. Um, Ed Schloman, of course, talking about the goal, and it's, a, it's an important goal. You've heard from Bob Roth, who so eloquently described how easy it is. And I've been doing it myself for a year and a half. It is simple, it is easy. I have the craziest schedule in the world, but I'm able to do it, and I have seen results immediately. You've also heard from Bob Cancro, the wonderful Bob Cancro, the esteemed uh, psychiatrist and my friend who works with me and also Lorraine of the Global Stress Initiative. And you've heard about the incredible psychiatric effect and the physical effect of post-traumatic stress. There is real medical evidence and you're gonna hear more about that in a few minutes as well. I don't have to tell the folks at Norwich uh, from the incredible results that you Admiral, Peggy, David, that you have all seen firsthand. It is incredible, and it is so inspiring. As a journalist, I cover so many different stories. Um, I, just, I was covering the Ed Koch funeral this morning. Ed Koch, many of you may know, was a World War II veteran. It was beautiful to see the military represented there, but the sad reality is the military is 1% of the U.S. population, but I believe it's the most important 1% of our population by far. When you think about post-traumatic stress, and as a journalist, I cover these folks who come back from Iraq and Afghanistan and elsewhere, 500,000 cases, half a million cases, they believe, of post-traumatic stress from Iraq and Afghanistan alone. Just think about it, how big the task is and how important it is what you're doing at Norwich University and elsewhere. It is critical, and it's critical not just for those in the military, but for all of us. All of us need to care because it's going to trickle out. You think about half a million people from Iraq and Afghanistan alone coming back and integrating into society, and now so many of them are coming back from Afghanistan. So the issue of post-traumatic stress is not just within the warrior and their family. It's a problem really for all of us, and we all need to tremendously care about it. Just yesterday, I got some very sad news Chris Kyle, who was the American sniper, many of you may know, I know I see some of you nodding in the room. He was known as the greatest sniper in Iraq and Afghanistan and elsewhere. He had a very famous book out, it was a bestseller for weeks. He was on my show. He was killed yesterday by a man who had post-traumatic stress who he was trying to help. Think about it, here is a man who was on so many tours of duty in Iraq. He had 150 successful kills. He was known as the greatest sniper. And a man turned on him who he was trying to help with post-traumatic stress. Think how, just how tragic that is. But just to show how incredible and how important the need is and what all of you are doing here in Operation Warrior Wellness, it is absolutely astounding. You know, I come to you today, though not as a journalist, I come to you because this is deeply personal to me. 
My father was a prisoner of war in World War II. My father, I knew had some issues when I was a teenager, but I didn't know how severe the issues were until he walked out one Christmas and left the family for decades. I knew my father had gone through something incredibly traumatic. How could you not? My father was a citizen soldier, a resistance fighter in World War II, a teenager who was frontline fighting against the Nazis from 1939 to 1944 until he was captured and taken on a boxcar and taken to a German POW camp. My father escaped. He was one of the lucky ones. He was 90 pounds and six feet tall. And my father, my favorite part of my dad's story is he was in the woods for two and a half days and a plane came by and the plane, you know, dro dove around them and they thought, oh gosh, this is it. We're in Germany, we're in wartime, we've snuck out, but we're gonna get killed. It's terrible in the camp, but you can imagine outside of the camp. And so the plane came by a second time and they realized there was a star on the plane and it wasn't a swastika. And they realized the plane had thrown something out. And what it turned out to be was not a grenade. It was an American plane. And it was a chocolate bar with a note wrapped around it tied with a red ribbon that said, welcome. It is safe to walk now during daytime. There are no troops between you and our American lines. You have 15 miles to walk and you're free. So my father ran then to American troops and was saved by American forces. And my father was so grateful to be an American. My father never shared his story for decades. And I think my father is really the extreme case of what happens with post-traumatic stress. Not only was he physically injured from all his wounds, but also mentally scarred. He did not share this story, even with my mother, whom he was married to for 32 years. I reunited with my father in recent years. We did a book together, and I'm so thankful, Bob, and, and you guys will, many of you get a copy of it today. Um, part of the proceeds go to troops and their families, because it was my father's way to say thank you to the grating fighters, fighters forced in the world that saved my father. But I wish that TM had come into my life and also into my father's life sooner, because had it come, I would have had my father very much a force in my life. I would have had the courage, I think, to reach out to my father sooner, to understand his personal plight sooner. And I think my father, I know my father, would have been happy to come home. I'm thankful he finally did. But I know the effects of TM in my life. I have seen a dramatic turnaround. My father unfortunately passed a few months ago. But my father and I were best friends when he passed. And I believe so much of the results of TM in my own personal life gave me the courage to reach out. And I think my, my verbal therapy with my father helped tremendously as well. But I can tell you that I do not want to see other families go through what my family went through. This works. It is tremendously successful. It is easy in a time where everybody's worried about budgets and so forth. This is something that we can all do in our own room, at our own convenience, in our dorm, at the college, wherever it is. It is one of the simplest, easiest things to do, and it's affordable, and it's realistic, and we have seen the results. And I applaud all of you in this room today to do whatever you can. And thank you all for being here, because this is such a tremendous cause. And thank you for caring about our troops, especially. You're going to hear from some great heroes. You're going to hear from my friend Jerry Yellen and some others here who have done some incredible, incredible things. Just remember, we are so blessed to live in this country. And anything any of you can do to help this program, whether it's financially today, whether it's to volunteer your time, to do whatever you can to help reach that incredible goal that Ed and Bob and Austin and also Jerry, that all of you are trying to achieve, I think it's a realistic goal. And I hope all of you help and do whatever you can. Thank you so very much.